Hi, this is Tanner from Dr. Energy Saver, and I'm going to be showing you how to properly install a David Lewis hatch cover. There are three criteria that define a properly installed hatch cover. First, and most importantly, it must stop airflow. We want to stop the warm air from rising up out of the house into the attic around the pull-down stairs. Second, it must be easy to use. This is the only product that we install that the homeowner will actually interact with. So it must be easy to take off when they want to access the attic, and it must be easy to put back on when they come down from the attic. And third, it has to look good. Again, as one of the only things that the homeowner actually sees, we want to make sure that it has a nice, clean, finished look. So the first step is to assemble the hatch cover. So it comes from your Dr. Energy Saver dealer with instructions included in the box. You just follow the instructions, they're very self-explanatory, to assemble the box. And you'd want to do this in advance in the shop um, to get it ready for the next day when you need to install it. So now we've got the hatch cover assembled. Uh, but you'll notice that there is actually some gaps all along the inside of the box at the joints where the uh, parts meet each other and also the dowels. Uh, so what we want to do is make sure that we air seal those so that the air doesn't leak through there anymore. Uh, so we do that with a polyurethane caulk and also an expanding foam. So you want to seal the leaks on the inside of the box with the urethane caulk. It's best to use gray because it matches the box but for purposes of this video, I'm gonna be using white so you can see it better. We also wanna seal the leaks on the bottom of the hatch cover so that no air leaks through there either. Then you want to use a one part expanding foam to seal the holes where the dowels are. The next step is to weather strip the bottom of the box. Now this is what's going to form the nice tight seal against the decking in the attic. Now the adhesive on the weather stripping doesn't stick to the foam that the hatch cover is made out of. So we have to put a strip of the urethane caulk down before we stick the weather stripping to it. Also make sure there are no gaps in the corners where the two pieces of weather stripping meet. So with these first three steps complete, which is number one, assemble the hatch cover, number two, air seal the hatch cover, and number three, of course, is to weather strip the hatch cover, what we want to do is let this sit overnight in the shop, um, and then tomorrow we'll be able to install it in an attic. Okay, so we've let the hatch cover sit overnight for 24 hours, and all the caulk and foam is dried, and we're ready to install it in the attic. So step four is to position the hatch cover over the opening. So what I'm looking at is the point where the weather stripping contacts the super deck. And I can see that looking right here, there is a little bit of a gap between the super deck and the weather stripping of the hatch cover. Whereas over here, there isn't a gap. It's sitting perfectly flush on top of it. So what that means is we have to make some adjustments to make it completely airtight. So now that we've identified the leaks, what we need to do is level the super deck in order to make the hatch cover have a nice tight seal against the super deck here. So we do that by either backing out the screws in the super deck or tightening the screws up further to lower the super deck in that area. Um, so for example, right here, this screw need, this is a high point here. So this screw needs to be um, tightened up a little bit to bring the super deck down. And you can see that just brought it down about uh, a little more than an eighth of an inch or so. And that should be nice and level in that area now. And in some spots, you might not only have to back the screws out 
or tighten them up, but you might actually have to use a flat bar in order to pry up the super deck in some areas. So this spot right here is a little bit too low, so we're gonna back the screw out and simultaneously push up with the flat bar. So now that we've leveled the super deck, we're gonna put the hatch cover back in place. So now you'll notice that the weather stripping is sitting nice and tight on top of the super deck there. Absolutely no gap in there at all. So now that the hatch cover is seated on the super deck such that it's airtight, uh, we wanna make sure that we install some sort of system to make sure that the homeowner can easily get it in the right position after coming up in the attic and moving it out of the way and then when they go back down and putting it back in place. So I've cut some furring strips in roughly the same size as the opening of the pull down stairs. And what I'm gonna do is install these such that the hatch cover will be able to be put in the same spot every time. So I'm gonna line this furring strip up with the opening of the pull down stairs. And then I'm gonna put it flush against the hatch cover. And then I'm gonna pull it about a quarter inch away from the hatch cover to provide a little bit of room uh, so that it's not so difficult to get on. And once I have it pulled back about a quarter inch, I'm gonna use some screws and fasten it to the super deck. And you don't need to use many screws, just, uh, just two or three per piece should be fine. and we want to repeat the process on every side of the hatch cover. Um, the last step is to air seal around the super deck. So we want to make sure that anywhere that's sitting underneath the hatch cover, uh, in terms of the super deck, that can be used as a passageway for air to rise up through the cracks in the super deck and out past the hatch cover into the attic. We want to make sure that we seal those with an expanding foam. Um, so places like this here, um, between the pieces of silver glow. Also, between the actual decking and the silver glow itself, um, beneath the silver glow and the framing, and also obviously the corners in the silver glow as well. We wanna make sure we seal all those leaks so that no more air can leak out of there. And you wanna do your best to make sure that this is done fairly neatly because this is going to be the area that the homeowner actually sees most frequently. All right, so now the decking is completely air sealed. So now our David Lewis hatch cover is fully installed and ready to be used. So let's just review the eight steps to properly building and installing the David Lewis hatch cover. First is to assemble the hatch cover. Second is to air seal the hatch cover. Third, we want to weather strip the bottom of the hatch cover. And then fourth, we want to position it over the opening of the pull down stairs. And then the fifth step, is to check for gaps on the bottom of the weather stripping between the weather stripping and the super deck. And then sixth, we wanna level the super deck. Seventh is to install these guides so that it's easy to use the David Lewis hatch cover. And then finally, eight, the eighth step is to seal all the gaps around the hatch cover underneath it here um, of the super deck where air could potentially get up from the house and into the attic where it's lost at the outside. And once those eight steps are complete, you have a fully airtight, functional hatch cover that also looks great. Additionally, we can use these bungee cords to help hold the hatch cover down against the super deck so that the weather stripping is partially compressed and it makes a nice airtight seal. So we're going to install four bungees, one on each corner on the long end of the hatch cover. So first we take the bungee and measure it to see where it needs to go. And then we take this foam tight fastener and press it into the foam 
around the ends of the hooks of the bungees. Then a screw is used to attach the bungee to. So once all four bungees are installed, there's gonna be some extra pressure on the hatch cover, uh, compressing the weather stripping so that no air leaks out of there and the homeowner's gonna be really happy with it. If you have a house that you'd like to make more energy efficient, if you'd like to lower your fuel and electric bills, or you have rooms that have cold floors, maybe an uncomfortable room over the garage, rooms that are too cold in the winter or too hot in the summer, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to help you.